Hi everybody, you have joined Sharon Lindley and I enjoy exploring art. My channel was known as Vivid Days, but it's going for a little bit of rebranding. Vivid Days will always be within there because that's my business name, but exploring art is what this channel's about. Exploring all different kinds of mediums and different types of uh, subject matters, just having fun. And I share my lens with you because that's what I really enjoy about art is learning. So you could say I'm a jack of all trades, kind of master and on so you see i just like love 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 learning anyway i've digressed which is typical of me and my channel but i wanted to show you this video is all going to be about the heavens not really but i'm really 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 getting fascinated again with nebulas and space and all the galaxies out there and i was walking around the shops the other day and found this really great book in a local bookstore 10 pound bargain with just phenomenal photography of the different space nebulas out there. And so this is what I am going to be working on today. So it's the Helix Nebula. So if you want to see how this one was created, watch the rest of this channel. Now, the reason I am going to be doing this is one, it's fascinating. Two, I'm not really that good at it yet, so I want to see if I can improve. But I love playing with clouds and I love playing with the oceans. And I just thought, you know what, I want to have a go and see. Because this book, you'll see at the end, has got very detailed pictures. I thought, I want to give it a go. So it's not the best painting out there, but I think I get the essence of the gases suspended there. And you get a little bit of depth and a little bit of interest. And hopefully the people that understand a little bit about stars will understand the helix nebulas now i've put a little bit of a little bit of blingy stars in there but i want to try and perfect that so it's not as big and bulky and i probably should have done that with a, a pen rather than paintbrush but all the stars are painted by hand but yeah come on this journey with me thumbs up subscribe share comments are always welcome and thank you for your support as we digress into different things and we're going to do a little mini series now on space, the universe, heavens. Anyway, uh, see you on the next video and thank you for hanging out with me. Bye bye. When I was out shopping the other day, I found this amazing book, uh, Pearls of the Southern Skies. And it's all about galaxies and I'm really drawn to those at the moment. And so today I thought I'd give a little tribute to the Helix Nebula. And again, it's not meant to be photorealism, although I should just enjoy the splendor of this book, but it's my interpretation of it. And I really enjoy the end result. And I'm going to keep working on this project. Well, not this particular one, but keep working through this book so I can create better nebula uh, looking pieces. But holla, I think it's not bad. Brushes I use today is this one here for the background. It's a size right there. And I predominantly used these two, which is, let me get them to the right side for you. Oh, best wash that one off. Uh, a 14 and a 4. And the detail of the stars is, there we go. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny brush. And then the colours I used for the background, it was Payne's Grey and Phalo. And then I started blending through uh, my cerulean, a purple, a magenta and a brilliant red, all blended with uh, red and sometimes a little bit of water to dilute that colour out. But I think it's a fairly good interpretation of it. What do you think? What's in the stars for you tonight? I'll do my best to talk through what I'm doing at the minute. I'm just applying the um, Payne's Grey and the Thalo Blue phthalo blue more in the middle, paints grey at the edge and I'm just going to make sure I've got a saturation of colour of both of those, hopefully the darker to the edge and it comes lighter in the middle. You'll notice in this video I cut little bits out, um, it's not because I don't want you to understand what I'm doing, it's just to save time for you um, and show you the essence of what it is that I'm doing and I am just going to blend through remove any excess and I'm trying to keep that center area white so when I apply that blue 
it's not going to have to work so hard and that white is going to help with that blue pop out so you saw me come through with a big brush just to try and remove um, any lumps and even it out and I'm coming in here with the cerulean blue and a little bit of white and just slowly gradiating it and taking the excess off I <clears throat> I start to blend it out into some of that um, phthalo blue and try to get it to, I don't know, remove some of the excess over the edge and I wanted it to start to look a little bit fluffy and get a little bit of that haze because even though in the reference photo I've got there's little, bit, little bits of lighter blue, dark blue and then it gra graduates out to a little bit of purple, a little bit of pink, a little bit of red, a little bit of white and at this stage it's my first time doing one of these in a long while last time i think i did a nebula it was with resin and i'm just going to enjoy the challenge of working through this book there are some beautiful eye-catching contrasting colors and i just want to see if i can improve on this technique and get them to really look like um, they represent a little bit of that majestical nebula that we will see throughout this book and also hopefully take you to a place far far away from here <laughs> i came through with my big brush with a tiny little bit of water on just because i wanted to re remove some of the harshness of the separation in color and just get it to blend through and because there's a little bit of water on there i'm just dabbing it off with a tissue i wasn't too worried about the patterns or it was going to stick to it but it actually gave a, a nice effect and when it was dried i then came and added a more restrained phthalo blue with the cerulean and a uh, hot tip have your little art journal nearby so if you do have any excess paint you can put it onto there and there's no wastage i i'm using the reference photo but it's more to understand how some of the colors or the gases interlinked with each other as i said i don't want it to be necessarily photorealism but it is never feel guilty should i say for having a reference photo and it is good to help you understand how you can create some of that sense of those gases a hot tip for you would be a little bit of patience um, wait for each area to dry before applying the next color unless you want in to blend it in and if you have a look even though it's a fairly i say a medium-sized brush i put very little paint on there and that is even too much I need to find a tinier brush uh, than the one I've got there I don't want to use the ones I've got for my watercolors because I've only brought a little bit of stuff over here with me anyway what you can see me doing is adding a little bit of white around where that cerulean is so it's toning in these slightly different um, degrees of blue trying to protect that center area just like it is in the reference photo and I do it like I do my clouds in tiny little swirly motions and that way you can get some gaps in there you get the different tones in there and it adds, adds to it looking fluffy so less is more let it dry and if you overcommit, it's okay a little bit of uh, water on your brush will help that start moving again uh, that paint I used purple um, just in certain areas i did come back and add some later on you can see i'm trying to leave a little bit of gap between that in the blue in some areas and there's a little bit more purple showing towards the right and again same technique which is just less is more if i overcommit, i wipe it off and then start swirling it around trying to have uneven sort of um volume of paint distribution that sounded really weird what i'm trying to say is you want gaps you want some to have more see-through areas than others and that little swirl helps you and slowly great graduating it out and you'll see me do this process throughout and i really enjoyed it i mean there's always moments when you look back on your videos that you think wow i really liked how it looked there i wish i could stop it and when you're painting sometimes you're so into the process of what you're trying to achieve you forget to see what's in front of you or opportunities that's in front of you so another hot tip is pause put it in a different position maybe take a photo have a cup of tea or coffee whatever you fancy and then look at it and see what you're doing so i think that's what i'm going to do on my next one 
I think I'm going to find myself a, I, th I think I'll continue working on this size canvas for now, but maybe a slightly smaller brush. And I, I just struggle to work in tiny little canvases. <laughs> And, um, but I did my mini projects, if you remember, and, um, I worked okay with that. So I'm going to continue, I think working on this size canvas, maybe get some smaller brushes or just keep trying to perfect it. Now I've just added a little bit of magenta and it's given a beautiful glow there. And you might say, well, Sharon, there isn't that much glow in the other picture of that. No, there isn't. But my magenta, as I keep applying it, is going to slightly make it, slightly make it, wow, listen to my language make it more pink and it's going to add to those tones and we're just doing a dance at the moment and as I say it's just a reference photo I could have put my own little colours in there which I think I might do uh, in some future projects at the minute my reference photo is just to help me understand well what does the Helix Nebula actually look for and what is it known for and can I capture some of the essence of that anyway as I am moving out you can see on the reference photo it's very solid colour in the middle and then slightly spread out gases towards the the end so that's what I'm trying to do is protect the amount of space I've got around it now I chose to hand paint on my stars just with white I knew I was going to be going over these stars with some more gases not all of them some of them but I wanted to do some now so that if I did it might add to a little bit of depth or the different colours and I was sort of looking at my reference photo for what about some other stars? How many does it look like it has? Because I've found on previous projects I've worked on, I could overcommit. Or when I do it with a toothbrush and flick it, you can get it splattered a little bit too much. So I wanted to keep the essence of controlling the darker areas, making sure there's enough coming through. But in some of the major stars, uh, referencing where they would be on there. And, and that's when you start to see, in my opinion, it started to look quite like a nebula to me. And I thought, okay, I'm capturing the essence of some of this. Now, I am using my red, and the red just uh, dissipated. Is that even the right word? Blended into that dark background quite nicely. Uh, and it was just a matter of layering that up over a few times. So you'll see me going backwards and forwards between the blue, the purple, the red, and a little bit of white. You'll see me then come and add some more stars just so we can bring some to the foreground and then I'll work in the middle t slowly highlighting it with more concentrated colour until I get to the point where I really enjoy it but about that now there I really liked it and I think with this colour I'm just applying now which is the pink or should I say the red with the white it looks a little bit too solid but I work backwards and forwards and I think I get the happy balance but for future projects I just need to less paint on there Sharon more gaps more restraint anyway I'm gonna put some music on for you now because you understand my thought processes and my theory behind it and if you've tried doing um, this particular helix nebula before let me know I'd love to see what you created what do you think about exploring a, a, a collection like what I'm doing? Do you find that there's something you might not be as good at, so you're just going to focus on it for a little while to get your skills up? Anyway, thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Thank you so much for your support. I hope that you enjoy this style video with me talking over, and I hope that you still learnt something from it. If it has given you... Uh, encouragement or inspiration to go out there remember to do the hashtag Sharon Lindley inspired me that helps me locate your video and I would love to see your painting or your video you can always uh, join my Facebook group where you can showcase your art that way it's a lovely group of very friendly people that share all their knowledge and encourage other people uh, other than that come back and see me sometime soon thank you for hanging out with me I hope the last little bit of music will relax you and remember to look up at the stars because there's magic in the stars and remember someone you love. Bye bye.